Hello, and welcome to my little video here. Today I'm going to be demonstrating an SN2 reaction, and along the way we're going to attempt to go a little more in-depth on each of the steps and topics involved in the process. So, here is the problem we're going to work on. You can skip to the end if you just want to see the answer, but if you think this video might have some important information, which who knows it might, I'd appreciate it if you watch, so let's read it off here. So in this problem, we are being asked to identify the electrophile, the leaving group, and the nucleophile that are most likely going to be involved. Then we are going to propose a reaction mechanism using curved arrows to show electron movement. Give all products, stereochemistry is important. Let's move it on. So I'm going to be real with you. SN2 reactions are relatively straightforward, but the problem is that you lose a lot of points on them because they're so straightforward, and if you're anything like me as a student, you really appreciate getting as many easy points as possible. So, for our first consideration, we're going to break down what an SN2 reaction is, then we're going to see how you can identify electrophiles, nucleophiles, and leaving groups, and then the third one is going to be how does it occur in three dimensions, and then the fourth is going to be how we go through drawing those stupid arrows. So let me see what the next slide is. Oh, so I'll just stay on this one. So right now we're going to address what an SN2 reaction is. So I'm just going to write it out. The S stands for substitution. Substitution. My handwriting is really poor. I apologize for that. The N stands for, I believe it stands for nucleophile, oh, it stands for nucleophilic. Nucleophilic, which has one L. Awesome. And then the number two means there are two reactive species. So it's going to require at least two different molecules to proceed. All right. So now that we have the vocabulary for SN2, it should help us decipher the rest of the problem. And that's another easy trick. When a lot of, if you're struggling with one of the concepts, really dig into what the words and vocabulary means because it might be a good way to be a good way to help you mark throw to move forward all right so let's start by identifying the electrophile nucleophile and leaving groups in our problem so we're actually not going to do it in the order listed above we're probably going to start by finding one because the other two are more closely related. So we are going to, hmm, because this is going to be another instance where vocabulary is helpful. Nucleophile roughly translates to nuclear loving or nucleus loving, which should give you some clues what to look for. If it loves nucleus, it probably has an abundance of electron density. And if you're lucky, like thankfully we are on this problem, it will have a negative sign attached to it because it has a negative charge. So that little nitrogen right there is going to be our nucleophile. Now in the next slide I'm going to give you a couple more hints on how to define other nucleophiles but for right now the key takeaway is that it's going to have a lot of electrons and it's looking for a nucleus to hang out with. So now we can move on to finding the electrophile and leaving group and another little trick here, go figure, electrophile actually refers to the fact that it is electron loving. And because it loves electrons, it must mean that at its current state, it is lacking in electrons. So if you go over to the molecule on the left here, because remember SN2 has two reactive species, if we found one on the nucleophile on the right hand side, the electrophile and the leaving group are going to be on the other side. So if you remember your electronegativity graph on the periodic table, you'll know that carbon-carbon bonds are going to be pretty much equal. I don't like this design because that looks like there's an equal sign, so we'll ignore that's not a double bond. But carbons are going to be equal in their poles. Um, so you go around here and the only bond where there's going to be any partial positive or partial negative is between the bromine and this carbon on the ring here. So that would signify that that right there is going to be your electrophile. And then 
that leaves us trying to find the leaving group. The leaving group is going to be attached to your elect file because right now it is uh, taking an unequal amount of electrons away from it. So guess what? Boom, bromine is your leaving group. And there we go. We've identified all the important players. Now let's go on how to identify those in other situations. Okay, so as we've already said, nucleophiles are nucleus loving and they're the attacking species in an SN2 reaction. So when you go about identifying nucleophile, you should look for areas with elect extra electron density. And if you see a negative charge, that's going to be a dead giveaway, or else it's going to generally be the more polar molecules such as, well, hopefully you know what the more polar molecules are. I'm going to give you a few seconds here to pause the video and find all of them amongst these. And we come back, I'll just rattle them off for you, rapid fire. Okay, so there is no tricks involved with these. Each of these species is going to have a nucleophile in them. So let's knock out the ones with the negative charge. Unfortunately, this negative ended up on the H, but really it's the O here. This N has a negative charge. Once again, ended up on the wrong thing. That N there. Iodine, bromine, this sulfur, and this oxygen. And then the ones that don't have the very lucky uh, negative sign, negative charge. This one is going to be your nucleophile, and so is this oxygen up here. And then. So another hint when you're doing these on a test is going to be that it's pretty safe to assume that the nucleophile is going to be one of the smaller molecules involved in the reaction diagram. It might not always be, but it's usually easier to identify them on smaller molecules, and a lot of times your instructor is going to write them as such. Another hint, and this is more for future problems when you're in a longer reaction mechanism, is that if you have a solution of water, there's going to be some OHs floating around, and as you see, this OH up here makes a pretty good nucleophile, so it's not implausible that you're going to have an OH perform nucleophilic attack. Another little hint. So now let's move on to the leaving groups. So the best leaving groups are going to be the halogens located. This thing already has a pen. What's going on here? One second. I screw that up. Okay, so the best leaving groups are generally going to be the halogens, which are found down here in periods, no, column 7A. Uh, the reason they make good leaving groups is because they have an ability to be stable as an anion, which means they can hold a charge. And these molecules, you know, they're one step away from the noble gases, which just hang out by themselves all day long anyways. So the halogens can pretty much do the same. They can hold on to that negative charge and be fine. There are a few other types of leaving groups that will be holding a nitrogen or an oxygen and they actually look similar to once they leave they will become basically a nucleophile. So from the molecules on the left I'm going to give you a couple seconds here to find the answers and then I'll go through them quick. Okay, hopefully you went through those just fine. And like I said, a good leaving group does eventually, or not does eventually, but can kind of end up being a nucleophile once it leaves. So we're just going to identify them in red. And it's going to be this iodine, this bromine, chlorine, OH, iodine, pen right away, iodine, chlorine. And then these bottom two, we have. NH2 group will be the leaving group, and then this oxygen attached to this CH3 will be the leaving group. And there you go. Leaving groups aren't that hard. Um, you really your best bet is always to go with the halogen, and then if you go from there, some of them are going to be a little more tricky to find, but as long as you know that it can form a stable anion, then you should be fine. Alright, now we're identifying life files. 
put a hole on. Looks like I just copy and pasted the same molecules. What's that about? Well, I put a lot of work into these and I didn't want to go to waste, so I might as well use the same pictures. So now let's identify the electrophiles, which you already know from our vocabulary lesson means they are electron loving. So the best place to search for them if you're able to identify leaving groups is attached to that leaving group because they already take an unequal amount of the electrons present in the bonds. So the unfortunate atoms connected in these case carbons are electron efficient and are therefore open to receiving more electrons in a more equal sharing. In this case is carbons which are electron efficient and are therefore uh, very easily going to be attacked by air, uh, molecules that are electron dense. So if you can take a second to try to identify the electrophiles on your own, you can pause the video and then we come back, I'll show them to you. Alright, found them? Awesome. Well if you didn't, I'll show them off to you here. So we're going to use the highlighter tool, which I already have up hopefully. Yeah, pen works just fine too. So that carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, and there we go. That's all of them. Um, so, now we're moving on to the mechanism attack. Since you already know how to find all the important players, we can move on to the fun part, which is to go from the skeleton structures over here, skeleton structures over here, and end up with a product. Now, I like to look at these in 3D first because it helps you understand more of the process involved. But because it looks a little muddled, we're going to have to prove to you these are the same. So you can see that your six-membered ring shows up over here. Some of them are just a little bit shadowed. And the bromine is going to be the big red molecule there. Big red atom, pardon me. And then you have the two methyl groups here hanging off the bottom. So you can see we've aligned with the actual stereochemistry pointing down. And then you have your nucleophile over here with the nitrogen being the blue molecule and then the CH3 being this gray one. Now you might be wondering why we did this, but it's important to use stereochemistry in an SN2 reaction because the nucleophile really can't attack this carbon atom, which is the electrophile, it can't attack it from the bottom because you have the leaving group in the way and in this case these two methyl groups are going to stop it. So the nucleophile is actually going to have to come from behind to kick off the bromine, the leaving group. Now commonly it is referred that the attack comes from below or the bottom, but this can change due to your point of reference. So I always go with the rule of thumb, just draw the product with the opposite stereochemistry of the leaving group. And that just decreases your chances of making error and kind of saves you some time too. So now let's move on to the worst part, which is drawing the arrows. It's actually not the worst part. It's relatively easy. If I can get my pen back here. So here is the NH minus and the CH3. Now the golden rule with drawing arrows is that it always shows electron movement. You're not moving the nuclei. So in this drawing, you have the negative charge which signifies that area of electron density so you draw it from there to wherever it's attacking and then for the molecule being attacked we're just going to draw a very easy one over here another methyl group and make an iodine so it's coming there the electrons from the negative charge are coming there and then the electrons on the bond are moving up to the iodine. And that's really the only rule you're going to have to deal with on the arrows. Just make sure that you don't lose points because you start drawing from nuclei. Because it's such an easy thing to kind of miscommunicate, but it really does change the meaning. So it's one of those things that it's okay that they're picky on. And now we've covered all our considerations. Voila, here is your finished product. So you have your nucleophile. file. 
your nucleophile over here, and the electrons from the negative charge are coming in to attack the electrophile carbon, and then you have the electrons from the bromine carbon bond moving up to the bromine, and then over here on the product side you have the nucle attacking nucleophile drawn with upward stereochemistry. See that? And then you have your bromine chilling over here with its negative charge because you're supposed to draw all products. So there is the completed problem. And then just as a quick little wrap up here, we're going to give you a couple things to take away from this. So some final considerations would be what you have already learned is going to stay relevant throughout the entirety of this course. Uh, things such as electronegativity, comeback, stereochemistry, um, these SN2 reactions are actually pretty common biologically, or at least something that follows a similar reaction. So this is probably going to come back in future courses you might possibly take. Another thing here, just to help with test taking, is don't be afraid to write out your rationale. Because if you write it down, first it will give the teacher an idea of what you're doing instead of them trying to decipher your arrows and thinking you're crazy. Second off, when you read it and see what you're trying to do, you might be able to figure out the answer. It might jog your memory. So it's never a bad idea to put that down there. And another thing, especially when you're drawing reaction mechanisms, is to take it slow. Make sure your products look similar to what you're supposed to have and that you haven't drawn some magical arrow that fixes everything. Because when you take your time, hopefully you'll get it right. Now I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any further questions, probably pose them to a professor because I will not have any answers for you. Have a good day.